we have some things to talk about. Okay, we have some things to talk about. This is a favorites video. Hello, y'all, welcome back to my channel. This is a favorites video. However, uh, we have a few things that I need to like share with you, talk to you guys about. I'm gonna save like all of the waxing poetic for the end of the video. So we'll go through like the actual like favorites and stuff first and then I'll blabber on towards the end. So if you see the length of this video, don't panic and think that like it's gonna take me that long to get through all the products, okay? Also, yeah, I'm gonna be messing because I just had oral surgery a few days ago to have my molar removed because I did not take my own advice and take care of it right when the tooth broke and problems ensued. Thought I was gonna get a root canal, didn't happen. Now I had to have the whole dang thing removed. My face is swollen on this side, so if I look a little bit lopsided or chipmunk cheeked or whatever, that is currently the situation. So let's just run with it, go with it. We're not gonna let it stop us from having some fun here today. One of the things I'm doing differently in this video is that I have actually broken up the products by categories. I'm gonna try to break them up in the description box that way. Again, just to make it easier for you guys to navigate the things you're interested in and maybe not. With that said, hopefully the favorites videos will be a little bit more organized moving forward. First up, I had shared with you guys about this L'Occitane. I think it's how you say it. It's not how you say it, but that's how I say it. Uh, almond oil, the shower oil. However, I also wanted to share with you a much more affordable version that is, it doesn't have the same luxurious, delicious almond smell as this product does. Uh, it is more of, honestly, I would say more like unscented. I don't know if it actually says that on here or not. And this is a Bioderma product. As you can see, I've used quite a bit of it. This is the other thing that I use to like shave my legs, this huge bottle on Amazon. Um, and I use this for like shaving. And then sometimes when it's the winter and my skin is just really dry, I'll do all of my like exfoliating, which is very important if you're dry skinned to exfoliate, but I will exfoliate, shave, which is sort of a secondary exfoliation, but it's not enough, you still need to do other. And then I will go and put this oil on and give it a light rinse before I get out of the shower and it really like stays on my skin, it makes my skin feel very hydrated. Using a product like this just makes my skin feel fantastic. It makes it a little bit easier to get on with my day after I get out of the shower and I can just do like a light lotion instead of like a deep hydrating body cream that takes forever to dry and feels sticky for four hours, you know? I also told you guys about the Wonder Beauty under eye masks that I, or under eye, I guess they're not masks, but like under eye, I can't, I can't think of the word, it's not gonna come to me. The little under eye patches things that I really like from Wander Beauty and I had mentioned that there was a mask that I like to use. I didn't bring it out here to share it then so I am sharing it now and this is from Shiseido. It's called the White Lucent Power Brightening Mask. It's one of those products that I feel like I can actually very visibly notice a difference in my skin. It is a pricier product because it is Shiseido. In fact, any of these things that I share uh, that I'm gonna talk about, I just want to like encourage you and remind you that like, I don't hardly ever, unless I'm just completely out of something that I really need, I just don't hardly ever pay full price for these kinds of products. Four or so times a year or more that places like Sephora have 20% off or 15% off. Also Ulta, if you purchase things through there, then you get the points that they allow you to actually redeem for cash. Just try not to ever pay full price if I can help it for stuff like this. I'm excited to share this because if you have been around my channels for years and years, then you've probably seen me talk about this years ago. However, mine expired and I believe I decluttered it at some point because it started to smell funky after like five years. This Tartlet in Bloom palette has just always been one of my absolute favorites. And once I had repurchased this, it very quickly reminded me why, because it is just such a good neutral palette. If you are fair skinned like me, sometimes it can be hard to find a good light shade that isn't white, but that uh, kind of just like covers up all the, the veins and stuff on your eyelids. The shade uh, Charmer in this one is that perfect shade for me and my fair skin. I always call myself pale and people will correct me. It's fair skin, not pale. Well, whatever two horns on the same goat, you know what I'm saying? And I really love like the sparkly shades in it, Funny Girl and Firecracker. 
uh, are the two like more sparkly ones. So is Rocker, it's got a little bit of that. It's not too much. Again, as I age, I find that not only do I feel, and this is just a me thing, this doesn't have to be a you thing. For me, the older I get, the more ridiculous I feel. Wearing a lot of like glittery stuff or whatever just doesn't really feel like me as much anymore. And also I do think at times it can also just age my face. Litter and stuff like that tends to just highlight the fine lines and wrinkles. Doesn't sit well on the aging skin, much better for the youthful folk. Either way, I just wanted to recommend this. If you've got a teen daughter that's just starting to wear makeup and you wanna get her like a really good palette that will last and she won't come downstairs looking like the Bride of Chucky, uh, this is a great like first palette as well. Okay, I have a couple more makeup products to share with you guys, but this point brings me to today's video sponsor and I'm so excited to share this with you guys. The company is called Peak Life and they make a number of different products, but the one that has got me all jazzed and has made my favorites list, it's not quite as prestigious uh, as making like Oprah's favorite things, but uh, Angie's favorite things is still, still good. That's what I tell myself. So this is the BT Fountain Beauty Electrolyte. This is like an electrolyte powder that you mix in with water. You can mix it in with cold or hot. This is the yuzu berry flavor is the one that I have. They come in the individual pouches, which make them super easy to like toss in your bag and go. But the reason that I was so excited to give this a try, and I've been using it for about a month now, is this product is the Youthful Skin Deep Hydration. So this has hyaluronic acid and ceramides. I watch a lot of like skincare channels Channels. And one of the things I've learned over the years is how important what you're doing internally is for the outward appearance of your skin. As I'm attempting to age gracefully and, and not feel like I'm rotting like an old glass of milk, I have realized the importance of not just the good skincare, but also the good things that you put into your body. And hydration has been, in my personal case, the number one thing that I feel like makes a visible difference in my face, in my skin, not only in like the appearance appearance of my skin and fine lines and stuff in my eyes and like the brightness of my eyes, sallowness. I always have some level of dark circles. There's no miracle product for that kind of stuff. But when you're dehydrated and everything is kind of just like sallow and like sunken, it just makes you look sickly. It took about a week, I would say, for me to notice a visible difference like on the outside. I always feel internally like I can feel when I'm well hydrated. What's really cool is that this product, this Peak BT Fountain, is really like the first skincare that you can drink. It's not something you apply outwardly. It's something that helps to uh, solve your skincare issues like from the inside out. And if you're not like a super skincare junkie and you're unaware how important like hyaluronic acid is and stuff, ceramides, it's one of those products that they visibly reduce the fine lines um, and increase your skin's elasticity, which gives you like a very deep cellular level hydration. And surprisingly, having a proper electrolyte level can actually help with like brain fog and stuff. So if you get that like groggy, brain foggy feeling in the afternoons, having your electrolyte levels be good and where they need to be can actually help to alleviate that like brain fog. Some electrolyte products can have a lot of other stuff in them, but this product has no preservatives, no additives, no sugar, and of course it is non-GMO, gluten-free, and vegan. For me, this is a product that I actually drink in the afternoons because I'm usually like doing my coffee and stuff in the morning, especially if you're a mom and you get that tired like afternoon brain fog. I love drinking my BT Fountain in the afternoon noons helps with that like brain fog as well. So I feel like I'm getting like double benefits of the hydration and the effects on my skin, but also like the alleviation of a bit of the brain fog, you know? So if you guys want to try the BT Fountain or any other of the Peak Life products, you can go to peaklife.com slash Angela um, and you can get 15% off and free shipping on your first month's order. So all that information will be down below in the description box for you. Speaking of those eyeshadow products that I was talking about, I had used to have a MAC paint pot in, I think it was Painterly, and it was always like the thing that all the beauty gurus would be like, they put this on first before they put on their eyeshadow. It was like their primer for eyeshadow, all that kind of stuff. Mine dried up and was long gone now. However, I saw this one on Mac's website while I was oogling over the new Whitney Houston Mac collaboration, which I don't need any of. I purchased this, the paint pot, and I got this in bare study because it is just a ever so slight shimmery, like light wash of color. I just, again, I kind of, you know, I, I typically have like one or two makeup looks that I like to kind of rotate between. And um, I really, really like this because like I said, it just kind of cancels out like the veins and stuff on my eyelids, 
but leaves just like an ever so slight soft shiny I, I just hesitate to use like shimmery because that's not really it it's just a very pretty like glow on your eyelids that's not like eyeshadow you know like I'm wearing copper or whatever secondary to that uh, I want to share this I think this might be limited edition this is a Laura Mercier caviar stick in the shade wild rose <sighs> I have a number of her caviar sticks. I've never had one in this pretty like shiny packaging. I typically go for the Beauty Pie caviar stick. Well, it's not caviar, but like the Beauty Pie eyeshadow sticks uh, because the price point is just so much better than any other brand. However, there's just sometimes you come across a color that you're like, I can't duplicate that anywhere else with any other brand. And so that is what this color is for me, this Wild Rose color. It is the perfect. So like this is a good like every day. I am wearing this today just on my eyelids, but like for, I don't know, I mean, every day, doesn't matter, holiday makeup looks. I really like simple makeup, like holiday makeup, where it's just a little bit of like some kind of pretty soft shimmery eyeshadow, light liner, mascara, and done. Not too much, especially if you're gonna do something like a red lip or whatever. My preference is never to wear like a red lip with a smoky eye, it feels like too much. So there's a few different shades, but this one, is my fave. I've been wearing these every day since I got them. And that brings me to the last of the beauty products. It's a liquid eyeliner, that's the word. See, I haven't even used liquid eyeliner in so long, I can hardly even think of what it's called. Y'all already know my love for the Charlotte Tilbury Dual Ended Stick. However, again, I kinda just quit wearing like black liquid eyeliner. I wear it every so often. And uh, I came across this little beauty. It is kind of that same plummy brown color in a liquid eyeliner and I have ascent, again worn this with those eyeshadows every single day since they arrived at my doorstep. I love like a little bit of the smoked out where I just use like uh, the pencil, the Charlotte Tilbury pencil and kind of smoke that out, use my brown mascara, the, the brown Charlotte Tilbury mascara that I've shared with y'all that I love so much. But then there's days where I like just the clean lines and the sharpness of the, the liquid liner. Um, it's there's just sometimes where I like that. I like that just very like classic clean lines instead of more of like the blurred smoky look. Depends on the day, but I couldn't not share this with you guys. Well, it's number 676. I don't know if there's a color name. I don't see it, but it's number 676. Six months is the expiration. Six months, my ache and fanny. I will stretch that out for a long time. Six months. A little bit loopy that I feel like the white balance is very off in this video and everything looks very like yellowy orange and it's kind of driving me crazy but nothing I can do about it let's move on let's talk about a little bit of clothing items so I wanted to share this sweater that is from Amazon I don't think I've worn like a fair isle winter sweater since I was about seven but there is a fashion person fashion blogger that I follow and I saw her wear one and I thought you know I actually like that like paired with the right things I don't feel like a like I feel like she doesn't look like a little kid in it and I just really really liked it and I got to be honest with you I got one from Walmart I want to say it's like around $20 maybe if somewhere between 15 and $25 that's more like pink all over this sweater is brown mostly with little hints of pink in it the other one is like mostly pinks and creams it's a little lighter now Amazon has this sweater in a like cream and light blue version which was so pretty but it wasn't uh, last I checked they might have restocked but when I ordered this one that one couldn't ship until like the end of January and I thought well I'll be dreaming of spring by then so it's very very soft not that you need to know all this information but I'm not wearing anything but a bra under it it's not something that I feel like oh this is itchy I have to wear like a tank top or something under it it's very soft I want to say I got this in a size medium so just depending on how you want it to fit but I really like it and for the price and the the quality and the look of it I'm like man wash this thing inside out don't put it in the dryer or hand wash it or use one one of those like dry L, like dry clean at home things just to keep it looking nice. Feel like the sweater will last. It does not feel like cheap. I don't know, I think it feels nice. I can't wear like fair aisle sweaters that are made of wool and stuff. I can't wear that. I will itch to no end. I mean, my whole like neck would be completely like red and scratched up in my arms and stuff. I'm, my skin gets real sensitive about certain types of fabric, which is weird because it's not really sensitive about any kind of products. Fabrics, yes. And of course, because I failed to mention this, a number of the things that I'm sharing in my favorites video this month are things that I think would also make good gifts because 
by the time this video goes out, uh, I think that the last minute shoppers will be doing the last minute shop and hustle, trying to find things. And for whatever reason, okay, there's a number of reasons that you might be waiting till the last minute to shop. I have spent many a year where it was like, nope, didn't have the money until my husband got his Christmas bonus at work or that last check, or that was a month where the way his pay cycle worked, we had an extra check that month. Uh, and so, it was like we had to wait to shop till we had the money. Uh, so I've been there many a year. So no shame in the last minute shopping game. So I wanted to share with you guys some things that at least at the point that I'm filming this can still arrive before Christmas. That's what I've tried to share as part of my favorites too are things, my favorites that would also make good gifts in some cases. There is a pair of pajamas that I never thought in a million years I would ever recommend to you guys. It's just not one of those brands that I, I don't know, I don't need to go into all that. It's not the point. The point is these pajamas are from Skims, which is Kim Kardashian's clothing line. Um, I will say I've tried jeans from Good American, which is her sister's brand. Some of her stuff is just, it's, it's really good and I haven't found a good dupe out there, like another version. And these pajamas are that for me. As someone who is 5'8", pajamas, which doesn't seem exceedingly tall to me, uh, pajamas are always too short, always. So I either have to buy them intentionally cropped or size up in them so that the length, I get a little bit more out of it. These Skims pajamas are very long. So if you are, I did see that in some of the reviews, if you are, very short, okay? If you are more like five foot, five foot two or something, these are gonna be very long on you. They're like a heavyweight knit. So I don't know how to explain that other than to say that, other than to say that they are, I don't know how to explain it. They're like, they're such a good weight. I've never had a pair of pajamas that is weighted as much as these. And because they are, uh, like the top is a button up, like it's the, you know, more of like the classic pajama with like the button up top, which we all know like that looks cute when you see them on websites and stuff. But in practicality, sometimes it's like you're sleeping in a straight jacket or something. It's, it can be very uncomfortable. The cotton ones or whatever, it's like, it doesn't move enough. I will often like, especially if they can be bought as separates, just buy the pants and a, and a different top uh, because I don't care for those button up tops. This one, it doesn't feel like you're wearing a top like that at all. It is just so comfortable. I got like the dark burgundy color as with all of like the skim stuff, they come in a lot of like uh, natural skin tone type colors. So like tans and creams and browns and stuff. And then she'll usually toss in like a black, a gray and a red or a burgundy in this case. I got the burgundy and I believe I got them in a medium. They're very, very like super high-waisted. In fact, so high-waisted that I, I roll them once. They are a lovely, luxurious feeling pajama, which they are at a higher price point. They're up there with like lake pajamas and stuff. These are not Walmart pajamas, which I have lots of those I could recommend to you happily from the new Joy Spun line. Lots of comfy pajamas. Uh, these Skims ones though, I feel like these will be like my lake pajamas where I will have them for the next like 10 years. Uh, I just recently passed on a couple pairs of my lake pajamas to my daughters because I'm just not big on pajama shorts and I had a couple of pairs with shorts in them. So I passed them on to my daughters and they, they just, they never wear out. <laughs> it's kind of unbelievable. And I feel like that's the direction. I, I feel like I'm going with these Skims pajamas will stand the test of time. So they would make a great gift. I ordered mine from Nordstrom. I'm sure there's other places you can get them, but I only mentioned that because I know you could pay an extra like five bucks or something like that and get gift packaging from Nordstrom too. So wanted to mention those. And then also this jacket, okay? I typically do my best when I am sharing clothing items to balance. I don't want to just share things that are uh, on the pricier end uh, and also just share things that are from Walmart and Amazon because that's the truth is, is that I'm sharing with you guys what I wear, what I buy. Contrary to what sometimes assumptions that people make, uh, like Walmart does not send me clothes. Every single thing that I share with you from there, I purchase with my own money. Uh, same thing with Amazon or any of these others. These are all things purchased by me with my own money. They don't send me these things and say, here, wear this and share it. That is not at all how my relationship with those brands works. With that said, I don't just wear those brands only. Obviously I wear other things. This is just a jacket that I felt like it's a jacket, so it justifies very easily to me, it justifies the higher price point because jackets are expensive, especially good jackets. This one's a little over $100. There's often, uh, I'll check and see. I got mine at Nordstrom, but it's probably available in other places because it's a Steve Madden jacket. It is a quilted, like shawl type jacket. 
in my opinion, my humble opinion, this is like the perfect mom jacket for tossing those kidlets in the car in the morning and running somebody to preschool drop off or school drop off. There's something about the way that this jacket looks when you put it on that um, it's something about the neck of it, the, the sort of shawl of it that makes it look like a slightly fancier coat than it is kind of gives you this pulled together look like if you had this on with leggings and some ugg boots or something you'd look more put together than you actually are you could be naked underneath i mean i wouldn't advise it because it doesn't have like a tie or buttons or anything it's just kind of like a cardigan style jacket so your bits and bobbles are going to come popping out the first gust of wind but it is warm and so comfortable. At Nordstrom, they had two colors. Again, I'll do my best to link to anywhere else I can find if there's other colors, but it's a Steve Madden jacket. They had black and gray. I got the gray. I'll put my size down below. I don't remember it off the top of my head. I think it's a medium, maybe a small though in the jacket. Maybe it is a small. It's so comfortable. It is the perfect mom jacket. So if perhaps you are in charge of your own Christmas shopping uh, or you happen to know that your spouse or someone else is like, I just need something to get you what, and you need a jacket definitely try this one, check it out. Uh, I don't know if it's in store or not, but definitely check it out because I love it so much. It's like, like a Jersey feeling fabric. So it's so soft. Oh, uh, I told you guys this was gonna be a long one. I'm trying. I'm trying not to be long-winded, but I can't help it. Okay, the last clothing item that that brings me to is this dress that is from Amazon. I have it. I'm not going to try it on and show you because I have to return it because, well, it does not fit me in an attractive way. I got the wrong size and uh, it's a little, I'm a little broad in the hips for the size that I purchased. So I would need to size up. It's a very unique color. Maybe you don't need something for Christmas still. Although I gotta be honest with you, I think this dress with some cowboy boots and a cute cardigan, a cropped cardigan, a long cardigan, a long line cardigan could be so cute, so cute. Also good for New Year's, especially. Again, you could very much dress it down uh, with, depending on the type of cardigan and shoes, or you could wear some cute little strappy shoes and a cute little short fur coat or something with it. There's a lot of different ways you could wear it, but the bronzy copper color of this dress is just so unique. It is so pretty. Um, it's kind of got that like slightly, I can't remember what it's called, like the bias cut or whatever, where it's like, kind of a twisted cut so it's supposed to hang and sit better on your body not if you get it in the wrong size though all right let's chat about some home and random things real quick the first thing i want to share with you is this little purse ball now this is basically like a crumb dust and the like catcher for the bottom of your purse i got this in a three pack and i my mom and my sister both came over and i dropped one in each of their bags and said let me know in a month what you think uh, the little casing on it so you just drop it in there and there's kind of this like sticky-esque ball inside and then the outside is like a hard plastic with like a honeycomb type uh, texture to it so that crumbs and stuff that roll around in your bag and your diaper bag and your purse they get all caught in that and when it gets full or gross or whatever then you just rinse it under water to get all those crumbs off let it dry that sticky part becomes sticky again and you drop it back in your bag so this would be a fun stocking stuffer perhaps uh, or just something practical if you're tired of reaching in your bag and coming out with like tiny bits of Ritz crackers stuck under your fingernail, which is somehow disgusting in the moment, even though it's just a cracker. It just feels nasty, you know? Happens to the best of us. Now wait a hot diggity dog second. Where is my phone? I just called my husband from my phone a minute ago. What the heck? All right, what's happening here? Okay, you guys, this is really tweaking me out. Oh my gosh, it's right here. I'm such a dingbat. Okay, I wanted to show you my new phone case uh, because this is definitely a favorite. So this phone case is from the brand Wally. They did reach out to me, so I will see if I can get back with them in time because I think that uh, I can probably get a discount code for you guys. Uh, but this phone I purchased myself. They did not send this to me. I purchased this with my own monies. It's a collaboration they did with, um, shoot, now I'm not gonna be able to think of the name on Instagram. <gasps> And I can't think of the name all of a sudden, but this was a phone case collab that they did. And I love just like this light blue checker print. And I really like that it's got like the little finger grip thing. It's got a spot here if you wanted to slide like a card in there, a debit card or something. It does a really good job of protecting my phone. Um, and it's got like not just the loop right here, but also like a piece of elastic there, which helps it to actually like grip your hand better. So you guys know I'm forever like 
trying out new phone cases and kind of doing something different with my phone. I really, really like this case. Even my mom came by, she was like, ooh, what is that case? So this is the only Wally case, or I think that's how you say it, Wally case that I've ever had. But so far, I really, really like it. And they do have a number of patterns and stuff. So I'll probably try something else from them at some point too. But I always forget, you know, changing phone cases can be fun, especially if they're not crazy expensive, which these aren't. Um, it's a fun, fun thing to change up on your phone. I'm gonna save a couple of the other home things. I think I'm gonna do a separate video. Uh, I might just do like a get stuff done with me and bring you all along while I do some errands and chores and stuff where I can actually like show you those things like in use. I feel like that's much more helpful. Um, so I'm gonna hold on to some of those and that will also help this video, although. I don't know that there's much help for it. It's already very, very long. All right, so let's just talk really quickly about accessories. I just wanted to share these with you guys because I'm a jewelry lover. I like good jewelry, uh, but I'm fairly like, I don't wanna say cheap about my jewelry, but yes, I, I can be. I have a couple of nice pieces of jewelry. I really like the uh, the look of some of like the David Yurman bracelets or obviously like the Cartier Love bracelet with the diamonds on it and stuff, but that, that stuff's expensive. We're talking like thousands of dollars per bracelet. And the David Yermans, if you want gold instead of the silver, I mean, I think the cheapest one would be like five grand or something like that. Obviously like that is not in the realm of, of possibility. So I really like these sort of inspired bracelets because they, uh, they do look similar to those. Um, I mean, obviously like anybody who knows those, but like they're gonna know they're not real. I don't care. Uh, I'm not, I'm just not somebody who cares about that. They just look like pretty gold, like stacking bracelets. And I just wanted to share those as well as the ring. So I do have a Cartier love band that my husband got me for our anniversary. It was like anniversary slash push present for the twins. Uh, like a just a the simple gold band. It doesn't have any of the diamonds or anything in it. Uh, the ones that have diamonds in it are, again, thousands and thousands of dollars. Uh, but Amazon has a very good uh, inspired ring and uh, I really like it. And I've kind of just been stacking this when I don't want to wear like my diamond ring, depending on where I'm going or doing on the farm. I don't want to have like things that are going to potentially break or fall off or make me look very robbable, you know? So <laughs> I really like the band. You can see that it's thicker. It's a nice uh, inspired ring, very similar to the Cartier ring. And then these bracelets. You could gift these if you have a person who you know wouldn't expect to receive a real version of one of these from you, uh, or just to gift to yourself, drop in your own stocking. I mean, the ring is like $8. The bracelets are anywhere from like eight to $14. They're not expensive, uh, but they're pretty. And I, I really like them. So that brings me to the other item that I had no idea would make a, a favorites list. I never thought I would love so much, but um, I've really come to love. And it's definitely something that is very, very giftable. And that is a pair of fingerless gloves. Now these are uh, from Nordstrom's. These are a most, I think they're a cashmere blend of fingerless glove. And I never would have thunk myself to be, I never would have thunk myself to be a fingerless glove person. However, the practicality of these just cannot be beat. It's really nice to still be able to use my phone because I don't care what any of these gloves say that are like, oh, these are tech friendly or whatever. Like you can still use your phone with these gloves on. No, you can't. Because if they don't slide just onto the right spot on your finger pads, then they don't work. And then you're like over there like a monkey slamming your finger around trying to like use your phone. I'm not about that life. And so I just really like these fingerless ones. And uh, I, they're very soft, obviously, because they're cashmere. They're warm. And I have worn them far more than I ever thought that I would. I think they would make a fabulous, beautiful, lovely gift for someone. And uh, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's like, if it's like negative 20 degrees, like, yeah, the fingerless part's gonna be a problem. But where I live, that's not a problem. It's good. I can still function, but keep my little handsies warm. And my husband greatly appreciates that because if you were to ask him, he would tell you that I have freezing cold hands, sometimes for no explicable reason. Sometimes I just like to put them on his back when he least expect it. Oh, I might've just figured out the white balance issues at the end of the video. So we're just gonna have to deal with the color variations. Okay, there's not, there's not much I can do about that at this point. Okay, I'm just gonna have to deal with it. That is the end of like the favorites products and stuff that I wanted to share with you guys. And there's still a couple more things that I wanted to share with you. One, I wanna tell you about a movie I watched that I loved and then tell you about our newest family members, farm members, if you will. So <clears throat> to make a very long story short, a friend of a friend reached out to us 
uh, because she had a goat baby that had just been born that was rejected by the mother and they needed someone to take the goat who was willing to bottle feed it. Bottle feeding a baby goat, depending on the size, the breed and stuff like that, you usually have to go out and bottle feed them four to five times a day uh, for a long time, for weeks and weeks and weeks. Um, <clears throat> they need to stay warm and they don't, they don't have a mama to, to raise them and to take care of them. Now, bottle goats can end up being some of your best like pet goats uh, because they spend so much time with you and you're bottle feeding them and everything. They do grow quite bonded to you. Lottie is a great example of said attached goat. It was about three and a half hours away to get to her farm and uh, we had also been told that they had a single Great Pyrenees puppy that they needed to find a home for as well. So of course, you all know, like when you send me and my daughters to go on an animal mission, we're gonna uh, come back with more than what we're technically supposed to. So we ended up bringing home a little goat baby and a Great Pyrenees puppy. Now she is a actual, <laughs> an actual farm dog uh, who's never even been inside uh, where she lives. She lives out on the farm with her mom and dad and already like helps do her thing out there. I mean, she's a puppy, so she just watches. But uh, so she's living in the barnyard and uh, Aslan and Charlotte are spending significantly more time outside where eventually Charlotte and her will be on patrol. Aslan, we're never going to break his Devo ways. And he's just he's from like show dog lines. He knows it. He's way too uh, pompous. He just, he will never be an outside all the time guardian dog. It's just not who he believes he is. And you just can't always rewire that stuff so easily. But Charlotte has been a guardian in her past. It's a whole thing, which I don't want to like get into all of that right now. She's an odd dog. We love her very much, um, but there are always difficulties to bringing home an adult dog that has had a whole life before you that you know nothing about. And that's kind of where we're at with Charlotte is that uh, she's six years old. She's had a few litters of puppies. She's been a guardian. She's been inside the house and outside the house. She loves our family. She seems to understand the boundaries of our property really well. She struggles. It's very hard to explain without going into a ton of detail. So we're very hopeful that again, with Aslan not being an actual guardian, Charlotte being six and these great Pyrenees dogs often not living much beyond 10 years old, we knew we would need something to be an outside guardian at some point. We figured it's best now while Charlotte could, you know, train the puppy, they could kind of work together. Charlotte is always trying to mother and uh, take care of our other dogs, our smaller dogs. That's what we're working on right now is the puppy and Charlotte, which the puppy doesn't have a name yet. Um, so the puppy and Charlotte are living in the barnyard. Aslan is in there, but he comes and goes. Like I said, he's mostly by my husband's side. Uh, and so those two ladies are gonna be the, the farm guardians and uh, Charlotte's raising her up. It is always uh, difficult. I mean, I'm sure that for some people it's not, but for me, it is always difficult not to snag that puppy and scoop her up and take her in my bed and snuggle her forever because she's so fluffy and so cute and so sweet. You can see that like she gets very happy. She knows what she's doing outside. It's all she's ever known. That's that's where she's happiest. Um, and we live in a very mild climate. Our dogs are good outside. Like if you understand this stuff, you understand it. And I don't need to explain it. Um, if you don't do research before you like leave scathing comments about how cruel of a dog owner we are or something like that. Um, these dogs are most of the time happiest outside. Uh, Aslan is a odd one. But anyways, so we're so excited to have the baby goat. My kids have all been wanting another like baby goat. And so now that a lot of like our travel stuff has settled, I was like, well, we've got time now that we could bottle feed a baby. And so when this baby popped up needing a home and that happens, she was actually a twin. So mom, took care of one baby and rejected the other. It happens. It's obviously not like a great trait to have in a goat, a, a, a goat you wanna use for breeding and milk and all that kind of stuff. It's not a great trait. You want your goats to take care of their babies uh, so that you don't have to, and it's just overall better for them. But uh, that doesn't always happen. And mother nature is cruel sometimes for reasons we can't understand or explain. But, um, but she rejected the baby, so there's no choice but for humans to care for her uh, or she would die. So. She has come to live with us and uh, we have named her Evangeline because all of our goats have names from the Princess and the Frog. 
So uh, we've got Rimmel, everybody calls him Rick, and Louis, and Tiana, and Charlotte, who's Lottie, and then Charlotte the dog, which we didn't name, but that's just her. She goes by Charlotte, Lottie goes by Lottie. We've got all the princess and the frog names, okay? We haven't named the puppy yet. That is proving to be much, much tougher than we anticipated picking a good name for her. I'll keep you guys posted if we get there. The other thing I wanted to tell you, y'all know like I'm not a big movie watcher, um, I'm just not a big TV watcher in general. I'm typically more of like either a podcast listener, an audiobook listener, uh, that kind of thing, a YouTube video watcher. However, um, I got really sick a few weeks ago and I just decided that I needed to like have a flashback moment and stay in, I mean, I was, I, I didn't have a choice. I had to stay in bed. I was vomiting my face off, but I decided just to watch like a bunch of sappy, like love movies. So I was like, let me find some Nicholas Spark stuff or something that I watched a few things. And then that led me down the rabbit hole of, you know, I saw the little thumbnail for the movie where the crawdads sing. And I, of course that book was like all over everywhere for a long time. And I'm not a, I'm not a big fiction reader. So I've, never read it, but I saw all the hoopla about it and stuff. And I thought, you know, I kind of read the tray, like the, the teaser or whatever. And I was like, this looks interesting. You know, I'll just watch it. So one night my husband and I, by the grace of God, my children all went to bed and went to bed relatively early and easily. And so we crawled in bed to watch this movie. And when it first started, I was like, oh, I don't know. Like there's just some things that upset me like more than they probably would the average person. There's certain things that like some people find scary that I don't or that I find disturbing that other people are like, Meh. I don't like to watch a lot of physical violence from family members, like parents to children, etc. It upsets me. I was kind of like, where is this going? And I just have to tell you, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And I don't know what that says about me because I know there's people who don't, they don't like the book, they didn't like the movie. I've not read the book. I liked the movie a lot. What really sealed it for me was the ending. Now I won't spoil it and please don't spoil it in the comments in case someone has not seen it. It did recently come out. So there's a good chance a lot of people have not seen the movie yet. I loved the ending. I loved the ending. I felt like it was, it was just the perfect, like so fitting for the story and the way it was told and stuff. And it's actually made me want to read the book. I find that you know, books are usually far better than the movie. So if I like the movie that much, I will probably really enjoy the book. Uh, like I said, I'm not a big fiction reader, but this one got me uh, for a number of reasons and I just really loved it. So uh, if you haven't seen it yet, maybe give it a whirl. It's not the typical like funny, happy-go-lucky, you know, type of movie or whatever that I, I recommend, but y'all know I'm weird. Okay. So it's like, I'm not recommending like some CIA expose or something like that. It's still fairly mainstream, but um, but I really liked it. So I would love to hear what y'all thought if you saw it. Like, let me know down below in the comments. Did you like it? How do you feel about it? If you can share that without giving away the ending. I just wanted to mention that to y'all because I went to like a Christmas dinner with my two best friends and I brought it up to them because I was like, why didn't y'all tell me? Because they, uh, especially my one friend, Stephanie, she, that woman reads like 50 books a month or something ridiculous. She reads a ton of uh, non, she reads nonfiction, but she reads a lot of fiction books, a, a lot. And so I was like, why didn't you tell me? She's like, I tell you about good books all the time. You just don't listen. Uh, so anyways, we had a good conversation about the movie and stuff and it was, it was fun. Maybe it was just part of me was like, finally like, ooh, I'm in the know on something like that other people know about too. Because usually the things that I like and enjoy are very obscure obscure and random and I can't talk to people about them generally because they're like what are you talking about anyways I just really enjoyed it so I wanted to recommend that to you guys as well all right this may have broken the record for the longest favorites video in the history of my channel maybe not there was once upon a time I think when I first started doing my Angie edits videos that that was it was like 45 minutes or 50 minutes or something I don't know this could break that we'll see we'll see where we land if you stuck with me till the end I love you so much. In fact, you know what? You know what we're gonna do? If you stuck with me till the end, uh, you will can enter. We'll do a, I'll, do, I'll pick someone randomly to get a $250 Amazon gift card. Okay, I'm just, I'm just making this up on the fly. So I don't know exactly what the details will be, but if you have tolerated me through this entire video and made it till the end, check the description box, go all the way down to the bottom, okay? Because however I'm gonna have you guys enter isn't gonna be super obvious. That way, only the people who really are here for it and you sit and listen to me drone on and on, you deserve some kind of an award. If I could send you all a $250 Amazon gift card, I would, but since I can't, I'll pick one of you um, or maybe two. 
we'll see. We'll see how Santa Clausy I'm feeling that day. All the details, all the way down at the very bottom of the description box, check there to enter. And I'll pick somebody within like the first 48 hours of the video being up. I'll give you guys some time. Sometimes it takes a good like 48 hours for YouTube to actually share my video with the people who've subscribed to my channel. So I'll give you guys 48 hours, but we'll do a little gift card giveaway. With all of that said, I love y'all so much. Uh, I really appreciate you being here. We are gonna have other content this month. It's not just gonna be gift guides and favorites and obviously this time of year is going to be product and thing heavy. It's just the way it is when it's like gift giving time of year and trying to share the different gift guides and trying to put it all into one video isn't really possible. So I got to break it up and all of that. So lots of fun stuff to come through the rest of the year and especially starting next year. I've got a number of projects underway in the house. There'll be some good like project videos and uh, we'll get back to a good breakup of sit down videos and doing some other things videos. I do love just sitting and chatting with y'all and I know that some of you like that too and it's your preference uh, but I know others don't. They want to see something happening or whatnot so that content will be making its way back into the regular uh, repertoire of videos very very soon. So I appreciate your patience and that's it. Okay, that's it. I'm gonna run because I could just sit here and talk to y'all all day. So I'm gonna run. Mwah. Goodbye. I will see you very soon. Bye.